Welcome back to HG Tech Logic. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Classroom, but this time for teachers. So, following a previous video of ours, we made Google Classroom for students, and we showed the students how to use it in their interface. Time's passed, and now it's time for the teacher's version. So, if you're new to Google Classroom, or you just want a couple of tips on how to use it, this is for you. And remember, if you're a student, watch the student's tutorial. So welcome to the Google Classroom web interface. This is the desktop version of Google Classroom, and this is where you'll be doing most of your stuff on Classroom. There is a mobile app, but we won't be going over that today. To make your own class, click the plus at the top and click create class. Now, because this is not a G Suite for Education or Google Workspace for Education account, this will appear. I've just got to confirm that I'm not making this for a school. In this instance, we're making it for the video. Class name. In this instance, we'll call it demo, section, subject, room, etc. Let's click create. Like the students tutorial, we'll go along with the idea of going from top to bottom. But to start off with, we're going to miss out these. What have we got first? The settings. This is the settings of the class. We've got the class name, description, the section, room, subject. In the general section of the classroom, we've got multiple different options. We've got the invitation code. Now, an invitation code is the code that can be displayed on your screen and the students can get their phone or computer or memorize it or get it sent to them and they can enter this code into their join class panel and join the classroom as a student. So you're going to be adding people in Gmail. Turn this off. If you want it on though, and you're going to be referring people that you don't know their Gmail address yet, and you're getting botted or your classroom has been shared, you can reset the class code. What's the stream? Well, the stream will come back to in a second, but let's say posts. Posts is where you can post an announcement to the class. You can set it so that students can do that. Students can only reply to posts, or only teachers can post and make replies. In this instance, we're going to set it so that they can only reply to posts. We can show condensed attachments and details or no notifications. It's suggested that you keep it on this. Show deleted items is a very useful feature if you feel as if your class is going to be posting stuff that they shouldn't on your stream. Enable this and then they won't be able to anymore because they can post it and then delete it thinking that you're not going to see it but you will because Google Classroom will then retain all posts for 30 days for you to see only you can see it, none of the members of the class can and in the marking section we won't go into that since different schools all rely off different marking systems let's try out the announcements feature. This is where you can make an announcement to your class. You can choose which class and specific students in the class as well. Let's make an announcement to the class saying Hi all. Italics underline make it bulleted or say that we don't want any of that instead of doing this and wasting your time instead you can just click the one and remove all formatting very useful you can add a google drive file as an attachment to your post a local file off the local computer a link to a website or a reference to a youtube video say you don't want to post it right now you can schedule it or save as a draft then you can choose when you post it. Say you made a mistake in the post and you got something wrong, you can go back and edit it. 
and then there's an extra say that you just don't want the post there at all anymore you can delete it as you can see you can still see it though like shouldn't the students not be able to see it? the students can't see it this is only something that you can see and it will be deleted after 30 days let's go to classwork and this is the main bit of Google Classroom that a majority of teachers will be using. Let's go to Create, and then Assignment. Let's make an assignment. As many teachers will be aware, an assignment is a bit of homework, or something that's been assigned to your class for them to do. It's work for them to do, effectively. So let's make their assignment or homework for revising. Now, the title is where you would leave a summary of what your assignment's about. And your instructions would be where you leave the instructions of the video. For instance, all the details. Let's say, hello all. As we said earlier, you can bold it, italics, underline bullet it or just remove everything we can add a Google Drive file upload a local file add a link to a website reference a YouTube video but what does this new button mean if we click it we can see that we can make a new Google Doc slides sheets drawings or forms if you use Microsoft products the equivalent to this would be Word PowerPoint Excel, a drawing tool, any, and then forms. Let's not make anything. We can choose which class it will go to, which students, how many points will be awarded. Let's say in this instance it will be 50 points. When's it due? Now it's suggested that you say when it's due on the assignment in bold. And it's also suggested that you set the due date here. If you're going to mention the due date here, it's almost compulsory that you set the due date here. Because if you're going to have a due date on your assignment, then please do remember that if you don't set it here on this right panel, your students will not be notified of the assignment having a due date. They'll only be aware that it's an assignment and it will say no due date. So... It's suggested that you put it here, but it's not compulsory. But if you are going to want a due date, it's pretty much compulsory that you put it here. Let's set it for the 7th, like we said. If you want a specific time that it can be submitted as well, let's say we want it by 12 o'clock. Topics is a very useful feature to organise all of your assignments. So let's make one called Assignment. A rubric allows you to do a marking scheme, but in this instance we're not going to use one because we are not a proper school and we also don't have to show because we're A, not a proper school and B, all different schools have their own marking system. If we click assign, it will go to the full class. Here we can see all the students work, we can leave private comments to the students in this list and we can also see all the details here. A quiz assignment is where it will make an assignment like you saw earlier but it attaches a Google form for you to use. Very useful if you want to make a quick quiz for your class. Let's make a question. What's a question? Well, a question is a quick question, like it says. It's a big surprise, but the question allows you to basically post some like, what's 9 times 10? You can choose them to reply with a short answer, or one with multiple choice. Let's do the short answer. The instructions. 
it suggests that you always leave instructions on your assignments or questions. Let's say your instructions for this one are please complete the question of what is 9, 9 times 10. Please submit via GC, Google Classroom. Remember, you can always bold stuff, underline, italics, billeted, or always remove the formatting. You can add attachments as well. Choose which class it's for, who in the class, how many points, what the due date is. I'm not going to set a due date on this one, and the topic. I'm going to make another one called quick questions. Students can reply to each other and students can edit answer. Uh, two in their own way useful tools. Students can reply to each other allows students to reply to each other's submissions. What this means is that deeming that this one is marked as unchecked, students can see other classmates answers after they submit. Note they won't be able to see other classmates answers before they submit, but only after they submitted and they can't change their response. Let's make the ask. Now that that's been asked to the class, we can see that they've got that. We can see who's responded to the question and see all their answers. Let's now make a material. A material is a very useful feature if you're going to be sending resources to your class. If you're just going to be sending something like a PowerPoint to your class, it's very much highly suggested that you send a material and not an assignment. An assignment and a material are completely different things and they should be designated for their own use. If you're going to be sending a PowerPoint or just general resources to your class, make a material. If you're going to be assigning work to your class, make an assignment. Let's make the material. Let's add the description. Now that we've done that, we can also add some more information. It's intentional that you add a lot of resources in this one, but let's add a link to a very educational website for the students that will help out a lot. Let's also add a topic. For this one, let's say it's material. Let's post the material to the class. And out of that slide, they can all see the material. We can reuse old posts if we want to, choose the class, choose what post, reuse, and then you can edit the post, but this time you're reusing it. We can also make more topics straight from here. Google Calendar will make a calendar for that classroom in Google Calendar and the class drive folder it will be a folder that's shared for all of your class and it's stored in the teacher's Google Drive. People allows you to add co-teachers and students and the marks allows you to have the marking scheme with the rubrics. That's pretty much the Google Classroom tutorial.